It has been a week now since Sonnet 4.5 got released, and I'm sure you saw these flashy charts on how it is the best AI coding model in the world. But what do these claims actually mean in real world coding, not just in benchmarks? I'm not here to make another hype video. You've probably seen enough of those already. In this video, I will go in depth comparing Sonnet 4.5 and GPT-5 codecs based on testing both of them extensively. We will see how they actually behave in practice, what the strength of each model are, and what I use them for in my daily coding workflow. So I want to start with Codex is oftentimes referred with being much slower when it comes to completing a task. We give the same task to both. Sonnet sometimes runs two minutes versus Codex is running for 10 minutes. But if you take a look at the actual throughput, meaning how many tokens per second does a model process, from my personal test, they're kind of similar. It's hard to find reliable resources on the internet that confirm that. We oftentimes see for Sonnet 4.5, it is around 60 to 70 tokens per second. But this resource, for example, says Codex is double the speed in tokens per second versus other resources say Codex is half the speed than Sonnet. But if you actually run the test and give the same task to both, you will see that yes, Sonnet is quicker in completing the task, but it also consumes much less tokens throughout the process. And if you do the math comparing how many tokens did both models consume during the task divided by the time for completion, you will land on a very similar throughput per second. So if both have a similar throughput per second, why does Codex run so much longer than Sonnet 4.5? Well, yes, Sonnet completes a task faster, which makes it a winner here. But throughout the process, it does much less reasoning and critical thinking. So when you run a task and take a look at the actual thinking process, Codex oftentimes does much deeper reasoning and critical thinking before it does executing. And Sonnet, even with this ultra thinking mode on, is much quicker in saying, okay, I get the task, let me write the code. So when it then comes to the actual code quality and the output it generated, I find myself oftentimes fighting with Sonnet not getting it right in the first prompt, and it takes multiple prompts to get to the desired result. Versus in Codex, yes, it took longer for the initial task, but the result of it is much better. So this makes Codex for sure my winner when it comes to the actual code quality. And I came across this very interesting article from Cognition in my X timeline. And in this article, they talk about their lessons of working with Sonnet 4.5 for their coding agent, Devin. And they came to realize Sonnet 4.5 tends to have a context anxiety. So less willing to consume the context, especially when the context fills up. So it tends to take shortcuts and leaving tasks incomplete when it reaches the context limit. So enough theory, let's test out both models in practice. So I have this app over here, which is a to-do list app that I developed just for myself. And when a user inserts a task over here, they press C on the keyboard and then can insert a task, let's say test. But right now when I exit out of it, nothing happens. It doesn't really save the process. So I duplicated the code base. I have Claude over here and Codex running over here. And I want to give them the same prompt. So if a user has made an input on this pop-up and wants to exit, then we want to go ahead and ask a confirmation before. So just show another pop-up that will either ask them if they wanna discard the task creation or if they want to keep editing. We wanna have the discard button pre-selected so user can confirm by pressing enter on the keyboard. And when we hit tab, we just wanna to toggle between this keep editing and discard button. If we press escape, cancel and go back to the create task pop-up. So I wanna give the same prompt to both. And for Codex, I've selected GPT-5 Codex in the high reasoning model. So let's paste the same prompt over here and run it. And for Claude, what I always do is I also turn on the thinking mode. If you didn't know about that, Claude also has three levels of thinking. They're not inside of the model name, but you can either type think the second one is think hard, which is the second level, or the highest reasoning, which I always use for cloud code is ultra think. And you also see in the UI, we get confirmed that the highest reasoning is activated. So let's also run this task over here. And I want to keep an eye on the time both of these models are running. I kicked off the process with cloud code around a minute later than Codex. And this just started to write code over here versus Sonnet is already deep in the writing code. So Sonnet is finished. All right, Codex also finished. Took seven minutes, 39 seconds versus Sonnet took around three minutes, 30 seconds, which makes Codex using more than double the time. So let's test out both. I have the version of Claude here first 
open up the create task pop-up, let's type something and I hit escape to exit. And yes, it shows me the confirmation pop-up and I can hit discard and yeah, the pop-up is cleaned out. So almost as we wanted it to be, but this is our initial prompt. And there's this detail over here of make the discard button pre-selected so user can confirm just by pressing enter. What I did over here is almost that, but the keep editing button is pre-selected. So just a minor detail that is easy to fix by feeding back in, but it's already something annoying. Like it didn't pay enough attention of what I actually wanted. Let's see for codex, test, escape. And if I hit enter now, it discards. So it is almost like codex is more like, okay, let me really think through this task and do more critical thinking reasoning before I execute. And Sonnet 4 is more like the student saying, okay, I got it, let me implement without fully listening to what I actually said. Now this was of course just a small feature and easy to implement, but I wanna do more of a stress test and try to implement a bigger feature in one shot. So I'm working with Superbase over here and I already created this subtasks table. And what I want to do is I wanna show on the task details over here, show subtasks on the bottom. So I have my full prompt over here to implement this feature in hopefully one shot. So on the to today page, on the task details, above this date estimate project picker section, we wanna implement subtask. We wanna show it in the same way we show creating task over here. So we have this inline task creation feature. So if you click over here, you can type the task and pick an estimate, pick a project. I don't want it. I just want to pick the task over here. And it also works if I have a task in focus and hit command enter, then I also get this line over here where I can type the task right below and it gets sorted at the correct position. Clicking on a subtask puts it into focus, something like that. And we can also use the arrow keys to toggle the focus. We wanna have this command enter feature that I was talking about, command delete, which is also something that we have over here opens a pop-up to confirm the deletion of the subtask. And we also want to implement drag and drop reordering of the tasks, same as we have on this list over here. No other task features are required for subtasks. So we wanna basically have the same that we have in this list over here, but with a few less features. So let's copy this prompt and paste it into both. I'm gonna start with clearing up over here, starting fresh and then paste it into Cloud Coach and give it the same chance to think hard about it. And same over here for Codex. Start new, paste it and run it. Let's see how both work inside of the prompt. I already told them that the subtask table is already there. So we have title, the task ID, because it is obviously tied to a task, a subtask. Created, updated are those standards fields is done also clear, done at, we wanna add a timestamp when it is finished. And we also need this rank function over here for the drag and drop ordering. And it's interesting to see that Cloud Code already went ahead and is writing lines of code while Codex is still reading through and exploring our code base to get the full context of, okay, how should we actually implement it? Because there's a lot of functions that are already existing in the tasks that we just want to replicate. So it makes sense to first study all of these features in the task section. So Sonnet is almost done with all of his checkpoints versus Codex is still exploring the code base and thinking about it. Okay, Cloud Code is done. It is around four minutes in because we started both of them at the same time. Let's already explore the cloud code version. So it did something down here, create subtask. It's not always showing as I wanted, but let's see if it works. So create thumbnail, create title. That also works. Click on one, hit command delete, delete subtasks. That seems to work, okay. Yeah, I think it's just an issue with the optimistic states that it doesn't show in the front end right away as deleted, but that's also kind of complex. I'm not expecting Codex to do that in one shot either. Let's have this one in focus and press enter. Okay, that doesn't work. Enter a new one, publish video. Okay, let's test the drag and drop. That seems to work somehow, <laughs> at least in the front end. Jesus, where did this task go? Let's see in Superbase. Okay, we have both tasks, at least in the database, but it inserts the same rank, meaning the drag and drop does not actually work because rank one should be a thousand, rank two should be 2000. That's how we have set it up in uh, the tasks one. 
Okay, so kind of works very confident that with just two or three more refining prompts, we actually get to our desired result. Let's see if Codex is finished yet. Yes, Codex is finished, ran for around 13 minutes, 21 seconds. So let's test out the Codex version. I already see create subtask down here. I click on it. Thumbnail, title, well, that works perfect. And it also shows instant, like it really feels like a great user experience. Let's see if I have this one highlighted. Okay, if I now press command return, it wants to enter it in the main task list, which is not correct. But yeah, okay, when I when I have actually selected it, when my cursor is inside, then it does do that. So this one would be a pretty easy one to fix, probably just one prompt of slight adjustment. But yeah, that is amazing for just one shot. Let's test delete. Okay, have the same issue probably. It tries to delete the main task, but if I have selected it, okay, then it wants to delete the subtask, which is perfect. Let's test drag and drop. Wow, that feels that feels instant. So it also works with these optimistic states that we have over here for tasks where we drag and drop somewhere and it shows optimistic instant in the front end without waiting for the database to refresh. This is just a, a better user experience. And it already implemented that over here, which is great. Let's see how the ranking works. I, of course, deleted all the subtasks before from Cloud Code, so we don't interfere. And yeah, you also see on the ranking, it puts like the first one is thumbnail on a thousand, title is the second one on 2000. And yeah, that's how we have sorted it over here. And it also seems to fully work. Let's see if it refreshes. Yeah, so even drag and drop feature fully works. That's very impressive. So I feel like the Codex version is definitely closer on what I initially expected and closer on the features that we have on this task list over here. I guess this is the case because we already have this fully working in today and we saw that it just took more time reading through everything and, and understanding what is already implemented, how does it work, and just implemented it in a better way over here for these subtasks. So before we come to what do I use these models for right now, there's another part down here and that is the features. Now, of course, that doesn't depend on the model itself. That is more depending on Cloud Code and Codex. But of course, they're using these models. There's still so many more features in Cloud Code. You can create custom hooks. They also recently introduced this rewind part where you can quickly go back to a state of a previous chat message and also MCP management in Codex sucks right now. I don't know why they did it so in a bad way. You can only customize them on a global level. And for example, working with Superbase, you always need to hop in on this global config file and then customize the project URL there without being able to specify it by project. If you know a better way to deal with MCPs inside of Codex, please let me know it out in the comments. This is driving me crazy. But in general, Cloud Code is just the more advanced tool and it feels like the CLI of Codex is still in the early stages, but we're talking of a billion dollar company here with a lot of development power. So I'm guessing they will do a lot of effort to keep up with Cloud Code and introduce more and more features to the CLI as well. So what do I use both of these models right now in my daily coding workflow? First for Cloud Code, I still prefer it if I work with smaller features, features that are very clear. If I just want a quick turnaround in a task, I don't want it to overthink. I still tend to use Cloud Code for that. I also prefer it for UI tasks. So if I just do stuff in the front end, I like the output of Cloud Code a bit more than what Codex generates for me. And tasks that involve MCPs, I oftentimes use Cloud Code for. I feel like they work a bit better together with these MCPs. Now for Codex, I right now use it for more complex features. I feel like it does just a better job and working with larger code bases doesn't clutter up the code as much. And as I stated up here, I feel like it prefers refactoring and refining a lot more than building new because it just thinks more and works on what's already there. That's my personal experience. So I also use it for large refactoring because of that fact and in general, I right now would define Codex as my daily driver right now, even though I work with both of them heavily. Yes, I would prefer if the CLI would have more features as Cloud Code has it. I would prefer if it completes tasks faster, but in the end, I just care about the output it generates. And for me right now, Codex does that better, even though I have to say both of them are great models and I love working with both of them. 
Now I'm interested, what is your experience with using the new Sonnet 4.5? Do you prefer it over Codex? What does the model do for you in your daily coding workflow? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to implement a workflow where your AI coding agent can fix itself, make sure to check out my latest video about the newly released Chrome MCP. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.